We're at the flea market this morning, guys. Or I guess it's this afternoon. I did wake up at like 8.30. I'm get close to you. How's the sausage? Bratwurst. Whatever it's called. What? How's the bratwurst? Tastes like bratwurst. I don't know what that tastes like. It's good. <laughs> anyway, he's going to grab a quick lunch and then we're going to go to our silver guy and see what he's got this week. And then we're going to go to PetSmart just to look around. And I went to Petco the other day and I got some footage of some interesting fish that they had there, so I'll put that in here too. And then I'm gonna go to the Dollar Tree. I need to get some Valentines for the boys. I'm gonna get some for the kids. I guess so, yeah. And um, also I learned how to make a DIY filter last night. Really, really simple. I have everything I need except for some kind of like sponge or cotton material, so I'll probably pick up a sponge pack of three sponges for a dollar at the Dollar Tree and make a filter for our five gallon, our little five gallon. A filter? Yeah. Where did you learn how to do that? Uh, creative pet keeping. Ah. She's, she's breeding betas. Betas. Betas? Betas. Yeah, so. Okay, I'll be back, guys. Thank you. What? I only have one of them. Good food. Oh, it's crap, you know. It's crap for about anything. Muskrat, primarily. Mm -hmm. Say this. Say this. Real quick. 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 Yeah. I know it looks like, I just ain't never seen it in person. <laughs> I got one in my collection. Well, we but I don't bring it out here because I don't want to keep them. people to handle it. Yeah, the, more, yeah. the more you handle it, you get a little wear on it. You get a little ding here, a little ding there, and after a while, it's beating the hell in back. <clears throat> Alright guys, so this is what we picked up today. He got a 2010 Eagle to add to his, his type set. Um, again, $21.00. But they're 23 on um, JM Boyan, I believe. So saved a little bit of money. And then of course I got my foreign coins. These were five for a dollar. Um, I just got you know the brassy looking colored ones today. I was impressed with this one because it's a 1970, and the detail was just still really good. This one was a thicker one, so I really liked that. It's a 67. Um, it's a 63. I just like the coloring on that one. And I hadn't seen one of these that I can remember. So I got that one. And then I also got some more tokens. And I did look these up online on eBay for what they sold for. And they were going for several dollars a piece, some of them ten dollars a piece. And I got these again, five for a dollar. Um, so these are from Italy, I believe. And they each have their own numbers on them, and I'm not sure what all that means. But and this one's from London, just oh, it says Italy, never mind. <laughs> Me, okay, I don't know much about uh, foreign countries, so. Please don't make fun of me. Uh, there's another another one. And then this one I really like because my family, the Eason side of me, originated from Ireland. And there's actually a bookstore in, in Dublin, Ireland called Eason's. And um, I'm going to look this up and see what it means. But I just really liked that it um, came from there. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then he threw this in for free because he said it was a counterfeit quarter. 
Um, I'm not sure why someone would go through all the trouble, but that texture that you're seeing there is actually from, there's like this film, like a shellac, some kind of coating over the entire quarter so that it feels like it's in plastic. So I don't know if it, it's a legit quarter that someone just painted and shellacked or whatever, or if it's an actual fake quarter. We haven't been able to find anything on it, but he didn't want it, so he gave it to us for free. So that was pretty cool. And then we picked up a couple more sleeves to put our 2x2s two in. Um, so that's it from the flea market. He had a lot of really nice stuff. Uh, you guys should see the clips, actually. I don't know where I'm even intended telling you about that. So, there we go. And then, I got the the stuff to make my the filter. I already have the gravel that you need. I have the air pump. I got a couple more air stones because they were really cheap. Um, two for a dollar or something like that. And this was a dollar for five of these. And um, so I'm going to make a little DIY filter for our five gallon and possibly the um, a snail tank as well and then I got this for a dollar also so that I can display um, take out the individual male guppies that I want to show you guys and it'll be a lot easier for me to show you what they look like so they can't run off and hide and it's not round so it'll help to be able to see them yeah so that's what we picked up while we were out and I didn't get any footage from PetSmart because they didn't have anything interesting and there was a lot of dead fish in the tanks anyway so I'll just put in the clips that I got from Petco because their fish actually looked really healthy this time. All right. all my crazy chickens and cats following me to the mailbox. What are you guys doing? Are you just going to follow me around? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a chicken herder now. channel last night creative pet keeping that you could make a DIY filter using um, some kind of container she used glass and I happen to have a little glass jar 
some gravel, some kind of media, um, whether it be like the cotton stuffing that you would put in like pillows or sponges, or I've seen these used on other channels, and then uh, air pump and air stone, which I happen to have, and carbon, um, which I also happen to have. So the only thing I've had to purchase were these. So we've got our biological, our mechanical, and our chemical. So we're going to try to build this um, DIY filter. First step is to put the air stone in there, and it's going to be in the center, like so. I've started over. I've put a hole in this so that I could stick the air hole through here and I'm going to put a hole in another one because I need two layers to have the carbon in between. Like that. Okay, so the first sponge is in here. Now we have a layer of carbon. Alright, so there it is. Um, my jar was a little small, so I would recommend using something a little bigger. I mean, this isn't, it's not bad. It's not meant to be pretty or anything, so we're going to stick it in the tank. And this is for a five gallon, so it didn't really need to be that big anyway. So we'll put it in and see what it looks like. And there we go. Water's all mucked up because I moved the rocks around and it was really dirty under there. We're going to be doing cleaning soon. But, yeah, we'll see how it works. If it's working, I guess this stuff will get really kind of yucky and we'll have to clean this part out. Change out the carbon once a month and just kind of wash these out and they can be reused. And then the beneficial bacteria will grow start a colony down there. So yeah, little baby fishes. <laughs> that was kind of easy. Oh, I forgot. Eric also picked up some shrimp wafers for the quarries because the other fish don't seem to let them eat very much. And we just realized that the little um, pellets that we were putting in there have copper in them and maybe that's why we've been losing a few of our shrimp so we got these instead all right i guess that's gonna be it for us today guys just trying to get some shots of the snails in here can't see them very well but there they are i'm going to up off here and start editing the video so I can get it up tonight and I will see you again tomorrow thanks for watching bye